Hey everybody, today we're going to troubleshoot this uh, 1970 Bonneville um, Triumph T120R. It was restored about 10 years ago. The uh, guy never rode it. I'm not sure what the story was, but he had it restored and then it sat in the garage unridden for about 10 years. I ended up with it. Um, needed some love just from sitting. There's a bunch of leaks, so I went over it. I've had it about three years now. Um, thought I had it sorted out and then I had back surgery so I didn't ride anything for about three years. And I went to move this the other week and started it up and it ran terrible so went over the carbs got everything working great. The other day I went to take it around the block turned the headlight on and the bike would not run. Uh, something electrical it's uh, it's an interesting problem so uh, Follow along and we'll see if we can't uh, go over things and, and see if I can show you how to maybe troubleshoot some of this stuff. I do have several bikes and you know, some of them British. They can be a little different compared to Harleys and whatnot. Um, but let's see what we can come up with here. Uh, here's the bike. For those of you who know what they are, this is the, you know, the holy grail of the Triumph world, the 70. T120. Uh, I have messed with this a little bit, found some bad connections and stuff. Um, the battery seems like a likely culprit, uh, but it is good. I went over the connections here. I load tested the battery. It holds 12.5 volts for months at a time. It, it seems like it's good. It doesn't always mean it's good, but it seems like it's good. Um, I did find some connections that were bad underneath the tank. Went over that, seemed to change a few things about how it was running. So uh, let's continue to rip this thing apart and see what we can find. is the stock ignition switch. I believe it's original. Here's the key. So it's probably 50 years old. All right. 
right, so the ignition switch is out. And as you can see, somebody used anti-seize on the contacts, which I don't recommend. But it tests okay. Doesn't mean it's okay, but it tests okay. Okay, so the tumbler I sprayed. And if you spray into that hole, uh, WD-40, I use WD-40, but you can use whatever. Uh, some sort of cleaning oil or lubricating oil. Uh, Trying to do this with the camera here, but I sprayed it in there and worked this key back and forth. And what happened was I got a lot of rust and grime and dirt and all kinds of crunchy stuff. When I went like that, I measured the voltage drop across the terminals uh, from the, right from the battery to the one side and then to the other. And there was a little bit of voltage drop across the switch. And then I wiggled the switch and the voltage drop went away. Um, I've had that problem before. As a matter of fact, with this uh, Harley with the sidecar here, I had an intermittent ignition problem on that bike for years until I finally figured out that it was actually the switch. Uh, I could show you that if you were riding the bike, ignition on, if it's an 85, it's old enough that the headlights don't have to be on to ride it. So if you rode in that position, it would vibrate just enough that it would cut out and start missing and carry, like it was running out of gas, it would carry on. Um, if you go like this, it would run fine for a while and do the same thing. And if you switched it back, it would change. If you went like this a bunch of times, it would, you could make it home. Uh, I finally ended up taking that switch apart because you've been obsolete for a long time now. So I took the switch apart modified it just a little bit and put it back together and it's been running great ever since um, but this one I took it apart and the little spring went flying all across the room um, it's because you took the you can take the tumblers out so you can just pull the key assembly out by pushing in on that little hole there's a little pin there that holds it in um, since it's dirty nasty probably original um, had some voltage drop for a little bit until I wiggled the key um, I have this MGO replacement this was on a another on a BSA that I have been working on I know the switch is good I rode the bike with it uh, so I'm gonna lube this up and then put this in the bike at least temporarily to see if it runs right, if it's anything's changed before I go replacing the battery. One other piece of advice. I cleaned all the anti-seize off of the terminals. Do not use aluminum based anti-seize on these terminals. I've seen it before. It's an old school trick. Uh, there's better things out there these days like good quality dielectric grease what happens if it'll focus it won't focus what happens is it dries out and it gets really kind of sticky in there and it turns into to a powder and then once it turns to a powder it just doesn't make contact anymore and you have to take brake cleaner or whatever wd-40 something clean it up and wire brush it all off and put it back together. Anti-seize is great when it's new and then when it dries out it can cause problems. So for all I know that was the issue. But let's stick this switch in and I will take the bike around the block and just so you can 
kind of see what we got here. There's three wires. The new switches have four terminals, but you only need the, the three. This the brown and white is the battery. This one's your ignition, and this one is your headlight. So there's only three wires. It's pretty simple. Battery in, both both of the same power out. I don't know if you can see they're kind of connected. It's the same two spades, but one lug on the switch. So fairly simple. And this is an MGO switch from a BSA that I built. It's actually at the powder coater at the moment. So. Um, I'll, if this works, I'll just order a, a Lucas one for this bike because it has a little bit different key style. This key is kind of big. The Lucas one has a smaller key. This bike being a really nice, fairly original uh, restoration, I like to keep the look the same if I can. I mean, I'm, I'm all about keeping it stock, but if, it's, if it doesn't work, it needs to go. I mean, I like to, I own bikes to ride them, not to uh, trailer them to shows. In my opinion, it's, it's better to change a few things and have a rideable bike that's enjoyable that you can get on and kick it and go and enjoy your day um, than have a, a really nice shiny bike that doesn't work. So. We'll put the headlight on and go for a ride. Good news, it ran better with the headlight on. Bad news, didn't hardly run with the headlight off. We definitely helped, or at least changed it. So I would assume that there was a problem with the ignition switch. I have a feeling I'm dealing with a few small problems together here. And every time I change something, something else is a little different. So um, I checked the timing and I noticed that the timing at full advance was way off. So when I adjusted it previous, I had it adjusted spot on. So the timing's changing and the rotor's tight on the Boyer. So I don't think it's the Boyer. I think I have a voltage issue I uh, added a few ground wires. Uh, I put one on the head to ground the cylinder head. I don't know if you can see it here. Just under, under that bolt there, I grounded the head right to the battery to eliminate any issues there. I also changed this ground. Um, what I noticed while I was riding was the ammeter, that little fella there. When I was riding it, and the, the more I rode it, the worse the bike got, but also the lower the ammeter was going. It, it would stay kind of just hanging out around zero. And I probably should have paid attention while I was adjusting the timing because it was jumping around a little bit. And that tells me you know, stray voltage or low voltage or something's not right. If I start the bike and rev it up, sometimes it charges 13 and a half to 14 and a half volts with or without the headlight, everything's good. If I try it the next time, it could be a minute later, I'm getting 15 to 15 and a half to 16 volts out of this thing. I thought maybe I had it with the grounds and the ignition switch, turns out I didn't. Uh, I should have paid attention to what the boyer was telling me. It was obviously telling me that there's an issue. I just need to find it. So um, I want to show you what's happening on the meter so you can see. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just need to bypass the stock charging system and put a, a you know, either a Podtronics or a Timpanium on. So at rest, 12 volts, headlight is off, I'm going to switch it on, high beam, low beam, and I'm going to start the bike and we'll rev it a few times.
all the parts showed up and uh, here's what the tympanium looks like now it still says tympanium on it but it appears as though maybe they've gotten bought out or something so hopefully it's still the same USA quality that it was before um, I want to just say a big thanks to the Bonneville shop for sending this diagram uh, along with it that's where I got the parts the Bonneville shop and uh, this one I actually had gotten a while back from Gary Rask, uh, Rask Cycle online. He has free downloads for that as well. Might be a little easier for you to follow if uh, you're used to the color-coded style wiring. This one, I have an electrical background, so uh, either one are fine. Um, so I have the unit. I have taken the few minutes to make a little bracket. It's going to sit in here just like this uh, so there won't be any need to really stretch any wires if it's in there real nice. I won't have to stretch or rebuild any wiring. I can just connect it to the, the factory stuff. Uh, this is the hole where the rectifier used to go which looks like this stock Lucas rectifier uh, and then the zener this is what your zener diode looks like and basically it just opens to ground and it sits in this hole here in the heat sink and connects here and it just dumps any excess voltage into the ground system and does not overcharge the battery or at least that's how it's supposed to work so I added a ground wire there cleaned a few things up cleaned up the grounds underneath there uh, at this point, that's basically just a hood ornament. It's just there for for looks. Um, got everything mounted in here. These are soldered. I just put these caps on to uh, cover it up so it doesn't short out on anything. Um, worked out nice. I shot the voltage you know I have the meter over here I actually went out and bought a new meter because I was kind of stunned at what I was seeing here and just started to not trust my meter so I went out and got another one I actually stuck the timing light on it again because I could not get it to idle again um, and what I saw was when it started to um, kind of sputter and and felt like it was going to stall what happened what was happening was the timing was just going super retard it just went way down and as you could see by the the meter the voltage is staying up so at this point we fixed the voltage issues as there were a few um, so all of that looks to be fixed I went through the wiring I went through the schematic and everything matches up the way it's supposed to this bike you know like I said was restored by someone else and he changed a few things but it, it seems to work I went through and checked continuity on a bunch of wires and, and everything everything jives with the schematic so um, at this point I'm going to change the Boyer ignition module because that is kind of my next step I, I don't know why the timing would drop out like that when the voltage is up bike was idling fine you know this was an all of a sudden thing um, obviously there were voltage issues so that's fixed now um, did we have a voltage issue that blew out the boyer box 
I don't know. So I'm gonna try, uh, I have another one here for another bike that I'm gonna build. Uh, so it's brand new in the box. I'm gonna swap out the boiler system and try again. <laughs> Sometimes it just goes this way. Um, it's about 95 degrees and 100% humidity. It's really hot in here and it's really frustrating stuff sometimes, but you know, you get to the point where it's either fight with it or change a part or two. Have the parts, I may as well change them. Uh, obviously changing parts for the voltage helped. Uh, so I'm hoping maybe that this does the same thing for the ignition. So let's try it. To add to the frustration levels of this whole thing, um, again, it's just the way <laughs> things tend to go here. Um, I started tracing some wires, and it led me up under here. Again, this bike has a boyer. Uh, what I found under there was this little guy. And if you pull the rubber cap off, what you come up with? Condensers. Now I looked in the original wiring schematic. 2CP condenser pack. Black white, black yellow with a ground. That's what we're working with. So that was left in there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's good or bad or not, but it's coming out. It doesn't need to be there. So I am going to put in the new Mark IV boiler that I had for the other bike. It had a Mark III. Okay, I have the boiler installed. Everything's buttoned up, cleaned up, soldered to the best of my ability um, everything looks pretty good so I uh, static timed the boyer plate was way off um, if you look it was all the way at the other end of where it is right now on the adjustment which is way off and that's the only way I could keep it running was if I went I had it there and that, that was as, as good as I could get it. So um, everything's done, came out pretty clean. They had, they had it tucked up under here prior. I put a bunch of zip ties on it. I don't know that I love it, but for the sake of this, we're gonna go with it. If it needs to be changed, I can change it later.
spike runs great. Couldn't ask for anything more. The Zener and the rectifier were probably the issue and then burned out the Boyer box. You know, I found the ignition switch. I found a few grounds. I found a few other things, you know, as we went that really just didn't make sense and got them fixed up. I actually have a friend who would like to maybe buy it. So it uh, should be a good, reliable bike for him and he shouldn't have any issues you know, fingers crossed, but he shouldn't have any issues. I uh, hope you learned something out of this. Uh, I certainly did. You never know uh, with these old bikes that have had a lot of hands on them. You never know who did what. You never know what's really going on. Uh, typically, I just cut the whole wiring harness out and start over when I work on a bike for myself. This one being as complete as it is, uh, I, I didn't feel the need to do that. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll have, well, maybe not more of this, but hopefully I'll have more content coming out. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks.